morning, we learned that ConAgra, CAG, the big packaged food company, is selling its ailing private label business, where they make the knockoff store brands for various supermarkets to Treehouse Foods, THS, for just $2.7 billion in cash. That's a lot less than the $5 billion ConAgra originally paid for this business when they bought Raw Corp back in 2012. Now, Treehouse is the dominant player in the private label food space, and they have a long history of making smart acquisitions. But the company's stock got slammed on the news today, down $4.80, more than 5%, part because Treehouse said it was going to do a billion-dollar equity offering to help pay for the transaction, but also because the company announced that revenues were a little lighter than expected. Here's the thing, though. I think Treehouse is in a much better position to make this business work than ConAgra ever was. And if they can turn it around then you better believe this stock will go higher, maybe even higher than uh, before the secondary gets price. Remember, Trios has been a real winner over the long term, with the stock up nearly 200% since it was spun off as an independent entity. Uh, that was a little more than 10 years ago. The S&P up 74% during that period. So let's check in with Sam Reed, the veteran chairman, CEO of Trios Foods, find out more about this transformative deal and what it means for his company going forward. Sam, I remember when you first started, and I know you never dreamed it'd be this big, but this acquisition doubles, more than doubles the size of the company. Uh, is this the crowning one? Well, it's the largest to date. And in context, Jim, we're now 10 times larger uh, in revenues uh, than when we first started the company. It's a transformative event uh, by any definition and in all dimensions. All right. Now, Sam, in the conference call, it's interesting. A lot of people are thinking, well, what can you possibly do to fix this dog, so to speak? But you said there had already been a lot of things that occurred in the last few months that ConAgra had done that made it so that this business was better. Yeah, they established a separate private brands uh, management team in June in preparation for this business. And that team, uh, all of whom will stay with us in the new company, have... Uh, we got in their first quarter together to show a positive revenue and profit trends, uh, and we're very pleased with that. All right, so why does this belong in, a, in the house of a company that does a lot of other private label rather than in, in with a company that does both private label and brand? The, the key here is to have a dedicated business proposition, and in our case, we focused only on custom products uh, customer brands and custom products, and we've developed strategies, Jim, that tie together the economics of a particular product category with the brands of a particular retailer and the set of consumers that use those brands, and it's the confluence of those three factors that enable us to find ways to do these things better uh, than if you were doing them on a part-time basis. Now, I know that it's, uh, it's easy to understand where the synergies would be supply chain. You talked about procurement as being something that you think you can do better. That's typically not what I hear, but is this because of the, the heft of this new company? It's for three factors. First, just the simple size. We will double here and get economies of scale. The second matter is that we found that there is a lot in over-engineering and packaging that can be uh, taken, addressed. And then the single most important factor is regarding simplification. We had a business that when we acquired it had 56 containers of different sizes and shapes, cost. That business now has virtually doubled in size and we have only options of four containers, dramatically improving the productivity and the cost structure. Were there other companies that wanted this, or was it really just the logical place was Treehouse? Well, we were one of the favored strategic buyers, but I understand that uh, ConAgra indicated that they were uh, a total of as many as 35. And after doing this for a decade, I know that there is always private equity uh, at the ready when the, that opp opportunities like this present themselves. It was a well-run competitive auction. Now, Sam, when I first met you, I, I think that the idea that some of us, if we went to a store, we went to a, a Kroger, we went to a, a Costco, or of course, uh, shopped on Amazon, Whole Foods, we would, uh, I'm not saying be ashamed, but we would say, you know, it was a badge that maybe we weren't doing that well to buy these. The brands I just mentioned are now brands where we think of the private label as being sometimes superior, even without cheaper price. How did this occur in our lifetimes? Well, the extraordinary thing is that it's been the retailers who have led the uh, uh, 
uh, emergence of the best brands over the last decade or so. At one time, uh, brick and mortar retailers were in effect simply uh, warehouses for national brand merchandising and marketing programs. And they found that they would be undifferentiated except on price. That led, uh, coupled with the emergence of Walmart and Amazon, has led brick and mortar merchandisers, merchants to make the brands a primary part of their strategies. And it has built consumer loyalty, shopper preferences, re repeat trials, and it's been a great, uh, it's moved from a financial instrument to a great a strategic uh, tool for the retailing industry. And at the same time, there's no longer a stigma or even a, uh, not that much of a correlation between a growing economy or not when it comes to private label. That is correct. And the fascinating thing now is, as millennial consumers come to the fore, what we see is they're relatively brand agnostic and that their preferences for private label are much higher than their parents and we've made acquisitions uh, to get ourselves in the snack business, among others, and uh, more modern product forms to appeal to that consumer group, which is clearly on the rise. Well, it's just going to be another great deal. I hope I want our investors who watch to be able to participate in that secondary or even take advantage of it before that happens because the stock will not stay down that long. Sam Reed, Chairman, CEO of Treehouse. Great to see you again, sir. Thank you for coming on Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. This company knows how to make money, and you just heard why. It's pr pretty simple. We like store brands now. They're high quality, and they're less expensive, and therefore we like this combination. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.